Yeah, one of the things that struck me about your client load, your patients often had polytrauma comorbidities. Uh, many of your people were not not simply one diagnostic category. And I think I was very impressed with the the complexity of the caseload that you were carrying and want to read. And I imagine that makes you a pretty unique person within that um, system to go out and, and go out to uh, Fort Campbell or someplace in Japan and, and say, okay, we've got these polytrauma folks coming back from downrange. How do we help them? Yeah. Yeah, I think the the biggest benefit to me professionally in terms of growth working in, in that environment um, all eight or nine years that I did it, but definitely the four clinical years, uh, leadership years at Walter Reed. I think the, the biggest benefit was that from a concussion or a milder head injury standpoint, in the civilian world, um, while you do have effects of the brain injury for anxiety, depression, PTSD from the accident that may have occurred in the civilian world, um, you, know, you are dealing with, uh, when you're working with a client, Primarily, you're dealing with the head injury. It's not as complicated. That's not to say it's not complex, but it's not as complicated as an individual that may have lost one, two, three, or all four limbs, um, has a uh, traumatic childhood that comes comes to the surface, uh, individuals that then have PTSD from their very experiences, various experiences in combat or in training. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, the uh, hormonal issues from pituitary damage from their brain injury that they had at the same time they, they had their other injuries. And so what that allowed me to do is because of the comorbidity issue with that population, if you have an individual with TBI and an individual with you know significant PTSD, the functional challenges can be fairly similar. And what I noticed was in uh, that system as well as with the military, uh, the civilian system as well. You have individuals, let's say they have, you know, complex PTSD and a concussion or a moderate TBI. The TBI folks uh, who are used to working with relatively uncomplicated TBI, um, the client doesn't respond the same way because of the behavioral health concerns. So they say, well, I can't, I can't do anything with this. It's obviously mental health, you guys take them. And then the mental health folks, they're working with a person, and because of the brain injury crossover, the clients don't respond in the same way to psychotherapy. And so they say, well, this must be a brain injury. You guys take it. And so what ends up happening, especially in larger systems, um, is the person ends up getting dropped because they don't have a traditional profile that we are used to seeing. And this idea of this dual diagnosis, especially concussion with uh, some sort of behavioral health concern, pretty new in regard to the severity and the incidence and the prevalence and everything else in terms of the military population. So uh, that's why I decided to kind of make our program at Walter Reed a deficit, not diagnosis program. And what that means is that it didn't really matter what diagnoses you were carrying in your chart. We wanted to know what your functional challenges were day to day in your life, in your job, dealing with people in the community, whatever it is, and we'd help you from there. Now, as we worked with them, I got we got a little more uh, aware of okay, this is this is a challenge that's coming probably from brain injury, or this is a challenge that's coming probably from PTSD or anxiety or depression, and then that would guide our recommendations about who should definitely work with these guys or or women, um, and so we would then hand deliver these folks to trusted mental health professionals. A lot of times we were a gateway service for mental health. And I think of all the uh, of all the, the really incredible opportunities I had there, that was the most meaningful to me, was that usually folks would not be a big fan of talking about their feelings or their buddies they lost or anything else. And it was, you know, really eating them up. And uh, so they, they'd be referred to, to psychiatry or psychology and they wouldn't, they wouldn't go. They wouldn't invest. And then they come and talk to us we'd start talking about, well, the reason you're having trouble with X, Y, and Z is likely the fact you saw this happen or your injury experience and emotionally you're just not caught up to where you'd like to be at this point. Would you trust us if we kind of introduced you to somebody that, you know, that we know real well and has helped guys in similar positions and knows how to keep their mouth shut when it comes to reporting on what a person's dealing with? 
And so we'd walk them up there and sit with them in their first session. And that, and that would introduce them to the world of appropriately, de- <laughs> appropriately delivered uh, psychotherapy, evidence-based. And it really helped them get much, much better. Yeah. So that was probably the coolest part of, of our work there. Yeah, the thing that, that struck me is <clears throat> your experience there was very much like mine at, at Rancho, Rancho Los Amigos and Downey, early in my career, where it really was a team. And the team members were on a person-to-person basis. And we had, each had our own hat we wore and our discipline we were in. But we could help our patients get comfortable, get them to the right person and introduce them. And that's the soft benefit, but a crucial benefit of a team approach to this really tough, uh, complex rehabilitation. Absolutely. Um, the, the teamwork I saw there and the, the strength of the team, you know, it's a, you know, a cornerstone of all military operations, whether it's on the front lines or in garrison helping people or training or whatever. Uh, and I really saw the benefit of that in Walter Reed. I think the OT department had something like 30 people in it, 30 therapists or CODAs or, uh, assistive technology providers or rec therapists, uh, just incredible wealth of resources and incredible amount of support that, uh, the MHS and civilian, the Red Cross, um, we'd had an embarrassment of riches in terms of uh, funding to do really important things for the folks that we didn't have to worry about some of the other challenges in civilian health care you run into with resourcing. Mm-hmm. Things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to explain that. I think that's uh, something that we all of us need to be aware of is a possibility. Most of us don't have the luxury of that, but we can dream and, and hopefully talk to some of the uh, the folks that are funders and move that in the right direction, because that's really the way at least complex rehab should be practiced. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I think that um, brain injury, especially mild head injury, um, is something that you, you have to have multidisciplinary care for when it's appropriate. Uh, It's just the the literature is so clear about the importance of it. And it's really challenging to, um, it's really as a smaller entity like Brain Trust is, it's really challenging to establish that. Where, you know, from a therapist standpoint, our productivity standards are very much lower than anything. I mean, I've heard up to 90% in the civilian world and treating, if you're in a hand therapy clinic, treating 18 patients a day. You know, I mean, it's just remarkable how, you know, how much emphasis there is on productivity because it's a capitalist for-profit system. And for brain trust, because of the importance of disciplinary, interdisciplinary care, what our our therapists uh, and myself, we spend an awful lot of time basically case managing and trying to find resources in the community that have the right experience for the client helping them get signed up with funding sources. In our case, we do a lot of work with Department of Book Rehab uh, for Colorado and some other states. So it really is, uh, it really takes a huge commitment from an organization, um, from uh, an economic perspective to dedicate yourself or your business or your company or your, you know, uh, healthcare system, right, to truly embrace multidisciplinary care, but it's what the clients need. And so Mm -hmm. that's why we do it. we believe in it. Yeah. I, I know you know one of the things that you're really known amongst your peers um, and admired for is is your um, ability to to be a good teammate and communicate with uh, folks within from your perspective, but bridging to their perspective speech person, a vision person, a psychiatrist, a physician. And I think you do, a, you're a real good generalist. You're kind of like, I, I think you're the uh, the nexus of the team. And I, I know that you're mentoring um, the folks that I know that you've, you've been working with, you're mentoring them to, to take the same approach. So I, I really appreciate what you're doing. Well, well thank you. It's very kind. and. Just uh, just trying to practice the way I was taught. Oh, you did a great one. Tell, tell us more about Brain Trust. 